So AJ, first of all, thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. We met through our veteran connections. Mm -hmm. um, so I, maybe just to start off, I'm curious what your grand vision is here. People look at our business today and, and on a, on first blush, it's like, oh, it's, that's, it makes a lot of sense. It's practical. I can see the use there. But what we believe we've sort of stumbled upon through lots of hard work is the single most practical monetizable use case that unlocks people using this to scan the planet. And we're exponentially increasing the rate at which that pl the planet's being scanned by these devices. And give us three years, we'll be at the top of the knee of the curve and, and have most of the data, in, at least in North America and expanding into Europe. For today, you know, we're mm -hmm. in home improvement, we're insur in insurance. Uh, just talk about the use cases. Yeah, I think, you know, anyone who owns a home, the, the, these use cases will resonate really well. Those who, d who don't, um, they may not fully realize how painful the process of managing a home is. Why the Marine Corps? You know, you could have chose to go into a better branch like the Navy, uh, <laughs> but you chose the Marine yeah. Corps. Yeah, yeah, I'm kidding. But tell me why. No, no. Well, I mean, it is the Navy, right? According to you, to you Navy folks. I mean, that's my that's my story. It. So Marines, you know, they they're on the front lines. Uh, they storm beaches. They do the most dangerous work in the military. So why did you decide to do the most dangerous work in the military? Uh, you know, I think I felt um, it was a slow boil for me in getting to what I ended up doing. Um, from the moment of 9-11 to a couple of years later, kind of pulling the trigger. And then I, my first two years, I actually worked for DOD as a civilian. I tried to kind of, in my mind, bridge the gap between my my experience, my technical experience and sort of contributing to the country in this time of war. Uh, and it took me a while to kind of fully realize uh, I didn't want to look back and feel like I didn't... Uh, kind of hang myself out there yep. um, as much as others. And so um, I think the Marine Corps was the one place I knew if I if I entered that and didn't get injured that I would absolutely deploy. Uh, let me just say, thank you for your service. And I'll say one more time for, for folks who are listening in, uh, okay. you know, there's, there, there are different ways to serve and serving in the Marine Corps is one of the most dangerous ways to serve. So again, I uh, just want to say thank you. Um, yeah. So it so, seems like, like you're, you're Marine Corps experience, I, I think that was actually the genesis of um, of Hover, right? Like, you, you know, there was sort of this notion of using drones to map mm -hmm. out, uh, you know, sort of like um, uh, battle battlefields. Maybe, yes. maybe just talk about the very inception and kind of the quick pivots that happened uh, to get to Hover as we know it today. Yeah, so, you know, I, I was saying earlier when I met these, these engineers that taught me about photogrammetry and sort of state-of-the-art 3D reconstruction circa 2010, uh, two, two things kind of popped out to me. One was, look, I, I literally was three months back from Ramadi running missions with really bad imagery. And so I thought, wow, I wish we could have had this kind of technology just a few months ago. Like if people doing that job had this kind of data, they'd be a lot safer. And so that use case was very evident to me. And frankly, that's how we bootstrapped the company. We, the first $2 million in revenue to to hover came through selling an early proof of concept of our technology to DOD and the intelligence community. I was sort of trying to re-enter civilian life and was back to being that kind of geeky kid reading sci-fi and, you know, kind of trying to just re-enter tech and like the civilian world. And so I was struck by the sort of vision stuff of like, okay, there's a use case here that I know really well, but Again, this crowdsource thing, if there are infinity pixels and there is a way with with math to project the pixels into a 3D reference frame, if we automate that, then we end up with a live model of Earth and then we can start to touch on some of these things that I was reading about as a teenager, you know, Neil Stevenson talking about well, how we live in a virtual world. Well, let me, let me ask about that because, you know, I think um, I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we bet on founders and the reason why we bet on founders is because pivots happen. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the best founders know how to pivot in the right way based on where the yeah. market's going, where tech is going. So, so uh, my, my understanding is that, yeah. you know, uh, as a company, we used to use drones to sort of go around the house. Yes. Uh, and then at some point we came to the realization that using your, your iPhone or your cell phone was, was better. What, what was yeah. that pivot like yeah. as, as a, an entry point? There was this sense of in 11 and 12, we we started to realize that this thing was actually going to be in every pocket 
And therefore, by far, the, the biggest leverage point would be a pipeline that could leverage these photos and not photos from some specialized sensor. Yep. Uh, the pivot was less about, hey, from military to you know build the metaverse. It was more about military, this is the end game, but like, what, what are the use cases that, that actually are commercial or consumer um, uh, large enough to build a really uh, valuable business and start to turn the flywheel on this, on this sort of vision of building all the data of the planet? That was, I think, you could call it a pivot. It was a long journey. It was a three and a half year from founding to right around when you and I met to find use cases that were ubiquitous to the planet that are frankly transactionally valuable to everyone that manages physical space. It was um, a story of engineers being excited about a technology and then looking for hammers, right, with for their nail, looking for problems. And I, lo I love it. I love it. So, 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 so ne next question. Um, talk about your team. You've hired a lot of vets. Um, there are vets mm -hmm. on the board. Uh, you know, you've hired vets at a very young level and sort of grown them into senior people in your organization. Mm -hmm. Um, as a vet, I'm often, you know, uh, contacted and sort of, you know, folks will ask me, how do I break into tech? And, you know, it's hard to sort of match what you do in the military to what the tech roles are. Just talk, talk to me about how, you know, b both in the beginning and then over time, how you thought yeah. about bringing techs into, sorry, vets into the organization. Totally. And, and, but more importantly, and then developing them. That, that's one thing that I've been inc incredibly impressed by, both at the board right. level and then within your org. So, yeah, please talk about that. At the beginning, you're you're a small team, and you're trying to find people to rally to your cause that you believe will be um, all in and capable of helping you achieve the goal. And you know, the Marine Corps was my tribe, right? I didn't go to Harvard Business School. I didn't go to you know, like every company has some tribe DNA wherever their founder came from, and my tribe was the Marine Corps. And so, naturally, of course, I kind of looked to some of the people that I respected the most from that time or the people that I met after the Marine Corps that I felt like that's that's our kind of guy or our kind of gal and just tried to pull them onto the team. I think what, what I learned over time was there are certainly some attributes of not all veterans, but some veterans that they absorb from the military experience that are just extremely well suited to building teams. Uh, I think the two biggest ones being grit and 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 probably just gratitude like uh or or let's call it um humility uh a, a, a sense that they're just lucky to be here let me ask you I mean, so you know you you hired i think it was a marine corps uh you know um force recon vet nice. uh and then developed that person over time to become very senior in your engineering and mi or sorry ml um organization Talk about that. I mean, like, like, how, how do you take someone who comes from shooting guns in their past life to, you know, owning the the machine learning product and you know and the computer vision product over time? Yes, yeah. So that's Will Castillo, Castillo who runs ARG, our Applied Research Group, uh, and he his story is yeah he was a he was a Marine Raider uh, without a college degree, and when he left the Marine Corps, he somehow hustled his way into undergrad Stanford CS and then he started interning to hover in the summers and he went from a undergrad CS across five six years and now runs our applied research team and uh, you know I think the short answer people people always ask things like how do you motivate people and my, my kind of snarky answer is like I don't like he developed himself uh, now granted look the the environment um, is fertile for someone who's hungry and asks lots of questions and, and, and wants to be mentored and wants to learn from people who have more experience and Will is one of those people. But he he got to where he got and a lot of my team did even, you know, yeah, again, it's not just veterans because they're self-starters who basically they become obsessed with what we're doing or the team we have or both ideally. And so they just, they can't stop thinking about Hover and hence they basically will themselves into being the best version of themselves. I'm uh, honored and grateful and proud to be part of an organization that has hired vets in the way that you have. It's been an honor for me to be a part of the, the journey. Let, let me just say, AJ, thank you one more time for taking the time. I, I know you're busy. Um, thank you for being honest and vulnerable and sort of giving your, uh, you know, um, uh, your perspective on the questions that, that I asked. Uh, 
and uh, you know, look, look forward to the next uh, three to five years before uh, we take this thing public. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Well, thank you for the continued support. Um, I say it all the time, but I'll say it again. You, 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 you saw something in us that many didn't see uh, at a time when we were not the pretty girl, you know, being asked to the ball. And you saw it, and you bet on us, and you've continued to double down, and that means the world, and you know, is never forgotten.